The crust product is another kind of vector multiplication. It's also called the vector product. And we're going to say bye-bye to this marker. And what it is, it's a product of vectors which gives a vector. Okay? And the way we denote it, one wild guess, with a cross. Exactly. Right. So that's how we denote it, A cross B. And the result is a vector. Now, saying that the result is a vector, let's call the result C. C is A cross B. Saying that the result is a vector means that in order to tell you what C is, I need to tell you two things. I need to tell you what the direction of C is, and I need to tell you what the length of C is. If I tell you what the direction and the length are, that fixes C. Do you agree? Okay, so we're going to start with the, with the length. So, by definition, the length of C, the length of A cross B, is the length of A times the length of B times the sine of the angle between them, which we're going to call alpha or theta. What did we alpha? Okay, so that's the length of C. That's not the result here because C is not a scalar. C is a vector. That's just its length. Good? Now I have to tell you the direction of C. So the direction of C. And ah, so the reason I'm, I'm, I'm pausing here, because I'm not going to write it. I'm going to wave my hands a bit. So here goes. So first, of, so, so we have two vectors. Any two vectors, any two vectors in space, where am I? Any two vectors in space lie on some plane, right? If I take two vectors, they're on this plane. If I take two vectors, any two vectors. It's not that if you move them around, they're suddenly not on a shared plane. Do you agree? Okay. So the direction of C is going to be perpendicular to the plane on which A and B lie. Okay. So that's almost saying it all, almost, because if I take C perpendicular to the direction, to, to the plane where A and B lie, C can still point here, but it can also point here. So I have to tell you which of the two. Do you agree? And then we're done. Then we know what C is. It's perpendicular. We know which of the two, and we know its length. Okay, so then we're done. So the way, th there, there are like 50,000 ways to do this. I'm going to show you one of them, which I find uh, easiest. But if you see other ways and no other ways, that's just as fine. You can use whatever way you want. So here are A and B. So let's say that the blue one is A and the red one is B. You take your hand, your right hand, that's important, and you point it from A to B. So if this is A and this is B, A being the first one, B being the second one, okay, you point your fingers from A to B. Is it clear what I'm doing? And I do want to know the direction of C, your thumb is just pointing that way. Okay, so this is the direction of C perpendicular to the plane where A and B lie in the direction of your thumb. Okay? This is sometimes called the right-hand rule. Clear? Now suppose this was A and this was B. If I want to point my fingers, it doesn't work, right? I want to point them from, B, from A to B, and now A is the red one. Well, it does work. I have to do it like this. And then C goes the other way. Do you see that? Clear? Okay, so now let's write this. So the direction of C is perpendicular, perp, to the plane um, of A and B according to, to the so-called right-hand uh, rule. 
okay, which is what I just um, what I just explained. Is this clear? Okay, so another way of saying this is that if you stand on a high tower looking down at the plane of A and B, so you're standing on top of C, looking down at the plane of A and B, you should see A and B, what is it, um, uh, uh, counterclockwise. Okay, that's another way of saying it. I find it more confusing. But there are many ways of saying this in whatever way, whatever way you know, as long as you're getting the right answer is fine. Okay, so now we know what A cross B is, and let's write down several remarks. So, remarks. Remark number one, A cross B is a vector. That's why it's called the vector product. Okay, so that's very different from all the uh, products that we had so far. Well, not all of them. Different from the dot product, right? It's a vector. Um, the length of A cross B has a geometric interpretation. Okay, so what is it? The length of this vector is the area of the Parallelogram, which A and B defined, okay, para, what's it, double L, lelogram, is this how you spell it? We're going we're gonna to denote it as P dot from here on, I don't like long words, of the parallelogram defined by A and B. Let's show that. Let's show why that is true. So here's A, here's A, and here's B. You take any two vectors. Do you agree that they always, always define a parallelogram? You just take B again here and A again here. So any two vectors that you take define a parallelogram. So is it clear what the parallelogram defined by A and B is? Okay. Now, what's the area of this parallelogram? Well, an area of a parallelogram is its, the length of its base times its height. So let's draw its height here. Let's call it with the temporary name H. Okay. And do you agree that the area of the parallelogram, let me denote it like this, area of the parallelogram, equals the length of B times H? Do you agree? Now let's try to figure out what H is in terms of A and B. So here is alpha, here is the angle between A and B. Right? And do you agree that if you look at this right angle triangle here, sine of alpha is h divided by the length of a. So sine of alpha is h divided by the length of a. Do you agree? Therefore, h is the length of a times sine alpha. Right? I'm cross multiplying. So, so I can replace h here with the length of A times sine alpha. So I get B times A times sine alpha, where alpha is the angle between them. Do you agree? And B A sine alpha is the same as A B sine alpha. These are just numbers. These are scalars. We can interchange them in multiplication. So this is precisely the length of A cross B. Good? Clear? Okay. So that's the proof of this uh, comment here. Let's, um, let's write a few more things. I'm going to write them as, as, re as part three of these remarks. Uh, previously we called them claims, but they're 
There are really no more that, than small observations. So what is I cross I? See, I'm, I'm holding my hand. I'm trying not to do this, but I just can't. <sighs> this is so beautiful. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. What is I cross I? So if you think for a minute, what is I cross I? What's its length going to be? 1 times 1 times sine of the angle between a vector and itself. What's the angle between a vector and itself? 0. What's sine of 0? Zero? 0. So this is going to be the 0 vector. Do you agree? And likewise, j cross j, and likewise k cross k, all of these are just 0, but this time it's the 0 vector. Good? Okay. And... Within this same remark, what is I cross J, for example? So now we're going to need to use our right hands. Okay, so I cross J. So these are, I and J go in the direction of the axes. I is in the direction of X, J is in the direction of Y. And we want to do the cross product between them. They're both of length 1, right? And the angle is 90 degrees, cosine of which, so, sorry, sine of which is also 1. So the length of this thing is going to be 1. Do you agree? And in which direction? Well, here's I, here's J. I'm using my fingers. And in which direction is my thumb pointing? Exactly K, the positive z-axis direction, right? And its length is 1, so it's precisely the unit vector in that direction. Did everybody agree? Did, did you follow these? It's very cool to, to proctor exams in, in this course. Because you see people, and, and we're going to see lots of right hand, left hand, all kinds of things. And you see people sitting there and doing all kinds of things like this. And it's fun, it's fun. It's fun and funny. Okay, so I cross J is K. And likewise, if you do, for example, J cross K, you're going to get I. And if you do k cross uh, i, you're going to get j. Okay. What if you do j cross i? What if you do j cross i? Think for a minute. Right, you're going to get minus k. Do you agree? And this is, this is in fact true in general. We're going to write it in a minute. So, so do you agree to these little propositions? Guess where we're going to use them? Right, we're going to use them to express Okay, so somebody here said coordinates. When we are going to write two vectors coordinate-wise, and we're going to want to cross them, do the cross product, we're going to open up a, a long expression, and these things are going to show up. Exactly like the proof of the dot product for, for vectors written algebraically. Okay, good? So that's going to come up in a minute. Let's um, write this as a theorem. I'm not going to prove it. I'm going to, um, well, maybe I'll say a few words. But anyway, so part, part one, no, I is not good to use. Part one, so in general, A cross B is not B cross A, but it's always minus B cross A. It's a vector of the same length, but in opposite directions. And if you understand this, Here's the proof. Bloop, bloop. Do you see the proof? Everybody? Okay. So that's the first property. So in particular, this product is not commutative. Okay? It's not that it has nothing to do with the, these two things are related, but they're not equal. Okay? So that's the first property. Um, distributivity holds. So A cross B plus C equals a cross b plus a cross c. This is the dis distributive law, and this holds. Okay, I won't prove it. Um, three, um, if you want to throw in a scalar in there, then it moves around freely. So m times a cross b equals m a cross b equals a cross
cross MB. Let's just for safety put these parentheses here. So good. And maybe going back to our um, to our remarks. Um, do I want to put it in the theorem? Not really. So let's go back to our remarks. So some more remarks. Um, so first of all, this product is not associative. So A cross B cross C is not the same as A cross B cross C if we first do A cross B and then cross it by C or if we first do B cross C and cross it by A. They're not equal. It's not an associative product. Okay? I don't know if you've met so far products which are not associative. Have you? Or is this the first one? You've met products which are not commutative. Um, well, I think you've met. Did you, did you see? Oh, you didn't see matrix multiplication yet, right? Well, you're going to see an algebra. So non-commutative products are kind of abundant. Non-associative products are rather more um, rare. They're all over the place, but you meet them a bit less. Um, so here's, your, here's one. Okay, it's not associative. Okay, it does satisfy, however, it does satisfy a certain property which is kind of reminiscent of associativity, but it's not. It's a different property. And it's, it's, it's very special. It's kind of a special sort of thing. And it's called the Jacobi identity. So however, um, the cross product, the vector product, satisfies the Jacobi identity. So what's this Jacobi identity? It's, it's something much more general that shows up in various contexts, in particularly so-called Lie algebras. And, and you, you, there is a chance that you'll encounter this thing later on in your studies. But here's your first um, meeting. So the Jacobi identity says that if you take A cross B cross C, and you do first A and then B cross C. And then you add, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the order. So plus B cross C cross A. And I'm going to keep these. Plus C cross A cross B. Um, I'm going to get zero. That's the Jacobi identity in general. So notice that, that I'm taking all possibilities of starting with, with uh, one of them, but whenever I start with one, the rest are in, in ascending order. So if I started with B, then it's C, and then A follows. If I start with C, then it's A and then B. Okay, that's... Okay. I, I, I don't think you're going to really need this in this course. But it's, it's something that's good to know. Okay, so this, is, this would be remark number one. Okay, remark number two. But the important thing to remember is this is not associative. And, and the same statement that I, that I said for the dot product. Since this is something new, you cannot follow your intuitions. Okay, so any, anything you want to say about the cross product, you have to verify first that it really holds. Verifying that it holds means it's a theorem. It's something that you can show, something that you can prove. Okay, you can't just follow your instincts, which, which originate in regular number multiplication, and think that they kind of transfer on to anything that looks like a product, because they don't. Here's an example. It's not associative. It's not commutative. Okay, this one is kind of 
not. Okay? The only thing it really satisfies is this distributivity, distributivity property. Um, so another, another statement, which we had a similar one, uh, so uh, no cancellation. Is there a double L here? No. No cancellation, meaning that if you have A cross B equals A cross C, it doesn't follow, it doesn't follow that B equals C. Okay, how do you prove that uh, something which is disguising itself as a theorem is really not a theorem? Right, you just need a counterexample. You just need to find two or three specific vectors, A, B, and C, which don't satisfy this. Hence, it's not a theorem. Okay? So do it as an exercise. Okay? Okay, so... I, I, I'm not trying to, to, to... Well, I am. Actually, I am. You should feel insecurity when you start working with a new notion, like a cross product. You should not feel that we know what we're doing. You should feel that I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm going to do everything very carefully because it's something new. It's something that doesn't obey any old rules because it's new. Okay, clear? Even now in class, there are people doing... So cool. Okay, good, good. That's good. Okay. So what else do I want to say about the cross product? Um, right, the most important thing... We want to do it in um, coordinates. So let's do it in coordinates. So just look here quickly before I erase it. I'm going to use this fact. Okay? The fact that i cross i and j cross j and all of these are zero. And then when we take two of them which are different, I get the third one. Okay? So this is, this is what I'm going to use. So I'm going to call it a theorem. It's, it's a bit more of a mouthful to write this theorem. But actually, there's a short way of writing it, too, which I'm going to introduce. So what is... Okay, so let A equals A1, A2, A3. What do I mean when I write it like this? A1i plus A2j plus A3k, right? It's just a different way of writing the same thing. Both ways are extremely useful, so I'm going to use both of them whenever I feel like it. You should get used to both. Okay? And B equals B1, B2, B3. So these are two vectors given in coordinates. Okay? The algebraic way. Then... What is A cross B in terms of these coordinates? And the answer is, it's going to be a vector. So it's going to have three components. Right? And the components are the following. So the first component, the, the I hat component, is A2, B3, minus A3, B2. Two. The second component is minus a1 b3 minus a3 b1. And you might ask, why am I not writing it just as this minus this, but rather as minus the difference? You'll see that in a second. Okay? It's just, it is a funny way of writing it. And the third one, you might guess, is A1, B2 minus A2, B1. Okay? So, how do you remember something like this? It's kind of just annoying to remember this, right? To memorize it. So there's a short way of writing it. And the short way is something that you're going to see in algebra in a much more general context and is very useful 
but you haven't seen it yet if you haven't done the algebra course yet. And so I'm just going to tell you what it is. It's called a determinant. Okay, that's what it's called. You write it by using two long lines. And then in here, you write components. There are going to be nine entries here. And the entries are I, J, K, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3. So now you're going to ask, what, what did I just write? I wrote a, a, a table, a three by three table of entries, and then put these two lines around it. What does it mean? So here's the answer. Here's what it means. It means you first look at this entry, I, and then for it, you cross out, the, the, look up here, don't write this. You have to understand it because what it is is just this. Okay. So you look at I, you cross the row of I and the column of I out. So you're left with a little two by two table. And then you calculate it like this. A2, B3 minus A3, B2. That's this. You see it. So it's I times A2, B3 minus A3, B2. That's A2, B3 minus A3, B2 in the direction of I. That's why I wrote this here. Is that clear? Now you move on to the second guy in the first row, J. But when you move from one guy to another, you do it by uh, changing signs. So the first one is a plus, the second one is a minus. So there's a minus here, that's this minus here. You cross out the column of J, you cross out the row. You're left with these four guys, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Do you see that? And then you do the same thing, A1, B3, minus A3, B1, kind of like this. Clear? So the minus in the J direction, the minus is because I'm doing plus, minus, plus. J direction, that's why it's sitting in the second component. And then A1, B3, minus A3, B1. Good? And finally, plus in the K direction, A1, B2, minus A2, B1. That's this. Okay. So you're going to discuss determinants. This is called a determinant. And you're going to discuss them in your algebra course at length and see their properties and see where they show up. And in fact, you're going to see 4x4 four four determinants and 5x5 five five determinants. But in this course, all we're going to need is 3x3 three three determinants. And just knowing that this is just for us, all it is, is a short way of writing this. So if you remember how to calculate a determinant, you don't have to remember this. You just write i, j, k, the components of a, the components of b, and now you know what you're doing. i minus j plus k. Clear? Can you do this? Try it. Good. So you see, you see you know how to do determinants. Good. Good. Okay. So. Um, now, how do, how do I prove something like this? How do I prove something like this? I just have to open everything up, right, and, and see what we get. So I'm going to write proof here, and then you're going to say, no way is that going to fit here. And it is, because I'm going to be a bit lazy and not write all the expressions. So what is A cross B? A cross B is... A1i plus A2j. Now I have to write it in its most explicit form because I want to use that property of i's meeting i's in the cross product and so on. Cross uh, B1i plus B2j plus B3k. Right? Now the only property that I do know for the cross product is the distributive property. So I know that when two products of sum, when a product of two sums meet, then each term in each sum is going to meet each term in each sum of the other one. That's the distributive property. Good? So just like in the proof for the dot product, I'm going to get what? I'm going to get A1, B1, I cross I plus 
A1, B2, I cross J, plus A1, B3, I cross K. Do you agree? Plus six more terms, and I don't want to write them. You can, you can fill, it up, fill in the details. Do you agree you can fill in the details on your own? Plus six more terms. And then I'm going to use the facts that I know. What is I cross I? It's a vector, and it's the zero vector, remember? So this term is not going to show up at all. What about this term? What is I cross J? It's K, remember? So we're going to have A1, B2 as, as a part of the K component of the result. Where is it? There it is. That's this A1, B2 in the K component. Do you see it? Where is this guy going to show up from? Where am I going to get minus A2, B1? When, where are we? When J meets I, from A2, B1, J cross I, that's going to be A2, B1 in the minus K direction. Do you agree? So for K, I'm going to get A1, B2 minus A2, B1. That's this thing. Okay? Spell it out. Do it. See that you feel comfortable with it. It's not hard. I just told you what to do. Okay? So equals um, that thing. No way I'm writing that again. Good? Everybody feel that they can do the rest? Yep. Okay, good. Um, very good. Okay, one final small um, remark and then another fun little anecdote before we conclude this discussion of the cross product. So the cross product is something unique for three-dimensional space. It doesn't make sense in two dimensions, for example, because remember, what? well, I just erased it, huh? What is the cross product? The cross product, the, the, it's a vector whose direction is perpendicular to the, to the two vectors you started with, right? What's perpendicular for, 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 two di for a two-dimensional space? If you take two vectors in the plane, perpendicular to them is already going to put you in three-dimensional space, right? It's taking you out of the plane. So you, there's no such notion as the cross product in two dimensions. It's a strictly three-dimensional notion, okay? And we're not going to deal in this course in, in, in with spaces with higher dimension, but it doesn't work uh, either in higher dimensions. It's really a, 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 a kind of a three-dimensional phenomenon, okay? So, and, and those are the most important spaces in classical applications of this stuff. Okay, so that's why we're going to be using this notion a lot. But remember that it's just a three-dimensional thing. Um, and then finally, a nice little anecdote. Um, you can call it a theorem. I'm not going to prove it. But I want to write it down nevertheless. If you take A cross B, what, what, what kind of animal is this? When I, when I, what kind of question are you asking? Um, think of the mathematical zoo. In the mathematical zoo, there are, well, not zoo, come on, safari. Okay, safari, no cages. But there's one re region when, where there are these mathematical animals called vectors. And there's another re region where there are, there are these mathematical animals called polynomials. And there's another re region where these um, matrices li live in, in, in complex numbers and real numbers and di that's the meaning of what kind of animal is this okay so what kind of animal did I just write down a vector right do you all agree so when I do this what do I mean the length of the vector right so this is now what the, the, the animal that's written down here now is a number do you agree in fact a positive one now I'm going to square it. Now I'm going to add. So this is addition 
of numbers. And now I'm going to take the dot product of the same two vectors. What, what kind of, what's the dot product of two vectors? A scalar. So what, what's these bars stand, standing for now? The absolute value. Look, these bars and these bars are not the same thing. See, they are in cages. Hmm? Didn't mean for that to happen. Okay. And the claim is that this equals the length of A squared times the length of B squared. Okay, so you have the cross product, the dot product, and then here just a product of two numbers. Okay. And I'm not going to prove this. I don't know if you're ever going to need this, but it's cool. And it's even more cool if, so remark, if you apply this theorem for two vectors, which are unit vectors, for A equals B, oops, equals B, equals 1, that's meaning th that, that just means that A and B are unit vectors. What do I get? We get, let's think for a minute. What do we get on the right side here? 1, the scalar 1. Do you agree? What do we get here? So A cross B, we're, we're, we're asking what is its length? Its length is the length of A, 1, times the length of B, 1, times sine of the angle between them. We don't know what the angle between them is, so I'm just going to write sine of alpha. Do you agree? And then I need to square it. So sine square of alpha. Do you agree? Plus, what do I get here? What's A dot B? It's the length of A, 1, times the length of B, 1, times cosine of alpha, squared. You knew that, right? Okay, so it's always cool to get good old things from nice new things, okay? Even, even though this is like completely elementary, it's the most elementary property in, in trigonometry, but still here you have it showing up from a totally different aspect. Okay, so next, Yet another product of vectors, which is going to be called the triple product in the next show.